So the rumors are out there that the Copa America rosters will become 26-man rosters instead of 23-man rosters, as we previously assumed. The Euros has already moved to a 26-man roster, and now the other reports are that Copa America will be as well. It is not confirmed. I should say that at the time of me recording this video. Uh, if it does get confirmed, great. But I thought I would make a video to talk about what my 26-man roster would be. If I were king, I get tired talking about what Greg would do. So I do, what would I like to bring with the 26-man roster? Because I think we have a lot of depth and quality and versatility if it goes to 26. And there are some guys that might be on the fringe of a 23-man roster that would actually make it on a 26-man roster. What up, guys? I'm Pete Douthit, host of The 11 Yank Show. We talk about all things in the American soccer landscape. Smash that like button, and if you're new, smash that subscribe button, smash that notification button, so you don't miss a video, especially this summer as we're going into Copa America and Olympics. It's going to be a crazy, fun, awesome summer, hopefully, if Greg doesn't screw it up for us. All right, let's have a quick word from our sponsor. Underdog Fantasy Sports is back with a new and improved pick'em game across all sports that makes it easy to play fantasy sports with just a few clicks. Each sport allows you to build a parlay that includes between two and five predictions about the outcomes of player projections. As you would expect, the more picks you include, the greater the potential payout. Don't go crazy with it and play responsibly, but adding a few bucks here and there to a game gives it a little more excitement and stakes. Use my promo code 11YANKS or click the link in the description to start playing an underdog will match whatever you put in your account up to a hundred dollars. Enjoy. All right. So with the roster, we start with the goalkeepers, obviously. And throughout the roster, I tried to create enough quality, depth, and versatility in order to handle not only multiple uh, formations that we might want to play that I would want to play personally, uh, particularly with Serginho Dest out. Uh, that would change things, maybe move into like a 3-5-2, 3-4-3, 3-4-2-1 sort of hybrid, while also having the option to play with a back 4, 4-3-3, 4-2-3, 4-2-3-1, etc. Possibly even a 4-4-2 diamond. So I tried to consider all of these things. I tried to take the Olympics into account as well, and which players, you know, potentially would not be there for the Olympics. And I think I did a pretty good job. So the goalkeepers would be Matt Turner, Ethan Horvath, and I know it says Chris Brady here. But really what it means is third under 23 goalkeeper. So we have three under 23 goalkeepers that are hoping to go to the Olympics, right? Gaga Slonina, uh, Patrick Schulte, and Chris Brady. Now, you can only take two in the roster. So one of them is not going to go. And that one is probably going to be either the one that the coach thinks is the third choice or the one that their club is not going to let them go. Now, I'm assuming that's going to be Chris Brady because of Chicago Fire's past, um, you know, refusing to release him and Guti for, for tournaments and whatnot. So I think that's going to be Brady. Um, and I think, you know, if you look at Schulte, it seems like Columbus would let him go. They've let him go for Olympic <clears throat> camps more recently. Gaga Stonina is going to be finished with his loan over at KAS Yupin. And um, I don't know yet if, I think Chelsea might want to send him on loan again somewhere else, but maybe having him start at the Olympics um, could help them to find a, you know, lone destination. To be honest, I think, I don't think Gaga will start. I think Schulte will be the keeper. But all that to say, instead of bringing a Zach Steffen or a Roman Salentano or a Drake Callender as that third keeper, I would rather use that spot on a young keeper. Give them the experience of Copa America, get them into the roster, get them learning from, you know, the older keepers, Turner, Horvath, etc., because we are building for 2026 here, okay? And I think Chris Brady should be the third goalkeeper based on the fact that he's probably not going to the Olympics. And also just getting out of that disaster of a dumpster fire organization known as Chicago is going to be good for Chris Brady. All right, fullbacks now. And again, I tried to take into consideration the Olympics. I have Joe Scally, Anthony Robinson, Kevin Paredes, and Marlon Fossey. Now, A-Rob and Joe Scally are pretty, um, you know self-explanatory. Now, the, the second left back, I debated between Christopher Lund and Kevin Paredes. Now, Christopher Lund is also Olympic eligible. Um, so is Kevin Paredes. Now, Kevin Paredes has been playing for a good part of his career as a winger. Recently, however, Wolfsburg moved him to left back against, I believe it was Darmstadt on the weekend, and he looked pretty competent. 
And the good thing about Paredes is he can play as a wing back, as a winger, or as a fullback. So there's a lot of versatility there. To on top of that, there are other wingers that could potentially go to the Olympics. So for example, you have Griffin Yao, you have Taylor Booth, you have Quinn Sullivan, you have Esmir Baraktarevich. I would not bring Cade Cowell, but he will probably be there. So then maybe Kevin Paredes is better off being Anthony Robinson's backup and, and heading into 2026. Look, long term, it's possible that Paredes will be a left back anyway, right? That could be the long term uh, solution for him, at least at a high level. Like maybe he could be a winger in the Eredivisie, right? Or MLS or the Belgian League. But in a top five league, maybe he's a better left back. The truth is he's probably a hybrid and that is a wing back, which fits very nicely into my 3-5-2 that I will be playing. Now, Marlon Fossey is the backup right back that I would bring. I played with the idea of not bringing a backup right back because we, let's be honest, we're probably not going to play Marlon Fossey. But in a 26-man roster, we're going to bring four fullbacks. You know, it's like I can't bring 12 midfielders just for the sake of it. Um, and Marlon Fossey also has experience playing as a wingback. In fact, oftentimes for Standard Leash this season, he plays in a 3-4-3. And by the way, so does Christopher Lund. Christopher Lund has played wingback for Palermo many times this season. So we have options that way, you know, um, whether or not Paredes or Fossey really ever see the field is questionable, but reality is in 26 man roster, there are plenty of guys who won't see the field. All right, moving on to center backs. Now I have Cameron Carter Vickers, Tim Ream, Chris Richards, Austin Trusty, and Mark McKenzie. Why five center backs, Pete? Well, if I'm going to play a back three, sometimes if I want to have the ability to play a back three, I need at least five center backs. And these are our best five center backs. No, Greg, it's not Miles Robinson. Um, there's a good amount of experience and quality in here, right? With Tim Ream and Cameron Carter Vickers. They both have World Cup experience. Richards has been lights out for uh, Crystal Palace. And then Trusty and Mark McKenzie are younger, but, you know, probably the backups, you know, should we need them. Um, my, you know, if I played a back three, it'd be Ream, Robinson, and Richards with McKenzie and Trusty as backups. But this is pretty straightforward. You know, this would allow Jalen Neal, Maxi Dietz, and Miles Robinson now to go to the Olympics. Or potentially for Tim Ream to go to both if, you know, Fulham decides he's not a starter for them next season as well. Midfielders now, and I'm bringing eight midfielders. Um, Gio Reyna, Malik Tillman, Luca De La Torre, Eunice Musa, Weston McKinney, Johnny Cardoso, Brendan Aronson, and Tyler Adams. So eight midfielders for me... All of these guys, I'd feel comfortable with them being on the field. Maybe Brendan Aronson less so, but I would use Brendan in a very specific capacity. Brendan is a guy who you maybe bring on to def help defend a lead. If you're 2 or 3-0 up with the last 10 minutes to go, you pull off a Pulisic, you pull off a Reyna, you know, and you bring a guy who's a little more defensive-minded. And, and that's Brendan Aronson who can help defend. Probably would not bring Aronson on if I need a goal. But he definitely has usefulness. As For me, he's the 26th man on this roster. Um, and I think he still has some usefulness there. I don't see him being at the 2026 World Cup necessarily because I think he'll be surpassed by then. But for Copa America, I still think he has value in a 26th man roster. He wouldn't make it in a 23, but in a 26. Now, Tyler Adams may not be healthy. If Tyler Adams cannot go for one reason or another, or mostly because of injury... Um, then the next man up would be Leonard Maloney. He would be the next guy to bring. But even without Tyler Adams, we have, you know, Cardoso who can play the six, obviously, and then Eunice Musa can be his backup at the six. So we definitely have options. You can play a double pivot. Um, you know, Johnny and, and Luca, Johnny and McKenney, Brendan and Johnny. Like, there are options there. Um, instead of just trying to play a lone six if Tyler Adams is out. Although Johnny can play the lone six as well. Uh, but Leonard Maloney would be the next man up if something happens to Tyler, but these would be my eight. I think there's good depth. There's good versatility. We have, you know, three guys here who can play right back in Musa, McKinney, and Adams. Um, the, you know, guys who can play in multiple positions, for example. De La Torre can be an eight, a 10, or potentially a six, although I wouldn't play him as a six, a lone six, certainly. Um, you know, Brendan Aronson has, you know, value. He can play on the wing. Uh, Luca De La Torre can also play on the wing. He showed that for Salta Vigo. So I think there's a good balance of quality here, of uh, depth, versatility, and experience. 
Just three wide forwards, Christian Pulisic, Timothy Weah, and Haji Wright. Um, not really seeing the need for any more because a lot of our other guys can play wide. Again, if we're going to go 3-5-2, it's going to be wingbacks anyway. So Pulisic will not be playing wide and neither would Haji Wright. Uh, if we're going to go 4-2-3-1, then, you know, we have way up Pulisic and Haji who can play wide, but also multiple guys who can play wide like McKenney, Musa, Tillman, De La Torre, Aronson. There are lots of options. So no point in bringing uh, Zendejas or another you know, um, younger winger when they'd be better served playing at the Olympics anyway. On top of that, there are also three forwards, Ricardo Pepe, Fodor and Balogun, and Josh Sargent. Both Balogun and Sargent can also play wide. Sargent can play as a midfielder. I think, you know, Pepe could still potentially go to both the Olympics and Copa America. But if I'm bringing 26 guys, Pepe's absolutely in my top 26. And I think this gives us a good amount of variety and good amount of options off the bench, particularly in attack, which, you know, I'd be comfortable with any of these three starting a game, honestly. And I, I don't think we could say that a year ago, right? Or even, well, maybe a year ago, but two years ago, we had striker crisis. We brought Haji Wright and, and Jesus Ferreira to the World Cup, left Pepe at home. Sargent did all right. Still has to prove, I think, you know, in more recent times that he can score goals for the national team. That is the question mark for Sargent, because in the past, it hasn't been that way. Uh, but Pepe is proven. I know Balogun's having a tough season, but there's still a certain threshold of quality that he meets um, that you don't, you know what I mean? You don't kick him off the roster with that threshold of quality, uh, you know, unless he's so, so awful for us consistently over a period of time. Yeah, so this is my roster, guys, and I think it's a very good roster. I think it has an excellent amount of depth, quality, and versatility, and with just with the right coach. If we had the right coach who knew how to maximize potential, who knew how to manage in game, who knew how to get this team playing greater than some of its parts, this roster could do serious, serious damage at Copa America. So that's my 26 man roster, guys. Hit me up in the comments with your 26 man rosters. And we're only about two and a half weeks away now from the roster dropping, so it should be a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your week. I'll see you on Sunday for the top 10. Talk soon.